This week on Crossbeed. The Darwinist origin of God. Small G. Return of the bus signs. The Pope on the Holocaust. And the stimulus bill. A war on prayer? Hello, everyone, and welcome to Crossfeed Religious News. I'm Pastor Dale Critchley, Pastor of St. Paul Lutheran Church in Delaware, Iowa. I'm Pastor Jim Butler out here in beautiful Dedham, Massachusetts. So um, we're doing things a little bit differently today. Uh, it has to do with the geniuses at the Genius Bar at the Apple Store <coughs> um, not being all that brilliant. So, you know, we sort of put the genius in quotes. Um, so, yeah, long story short, we're usually we do this in iChat. Uh, tonight we're doing it in Skype. It's going to be a little different. Uh, you'll notice our viewers, um, are, you'll notice uh, we've got Jim and me kind of side by side instead of one person in a little box is the way it's going to turn out, um, which that's kind of a bonus. Um, on the other hand, we won't have the backdrops that we normally have. And, um, and I, the sound right now sounds kind of strange. Um, so if the sound isn't real great, I apologize for that. So, um, hopefully, uh, repairs will get done soon and, um, we'll be back to the way we were. Yep. The way we were. I, I saw, I remember that movie, the way we were. So, uh, I was talking with, uh, one of my kids today, uh, one of, not one of the kids at the church and, uh, they're getting into Darwin and revolution and stuff at school and we were talking about that so it was an interesting conversation what i didn't realize though is that there's a, a darwinist explanation for belief in god uh and it's this is an interesting little article um born believers how your brain is creates god uh from uh, the new scientist which apparently is a british magazine um uh, it's interesting that they consistently refer to god in small by small g yeah, about yeah, the article. Well, you know, I don't know. It's interesting, but it's not all that surprising. Oh, so, I thought it was. Uh... Now, anybody that subscribes to my sermon podcast, I, and you know, this is going to sound weird, but I preached on this article <laughs> last week. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I know. You know, usually you pick us, uh, you know, something out of the Bible. I preached on the uh, article from New Scientist magazine. Actually, I was preaching on the Isaiah text. Uh, do you not know? Have you not heard? And uh, and talking about, you know, do you know uh, who God is? And um, and so, but I, I kind of use this article as my um, as my basis, and um, it really. Uh, it, it was really kind of fascinating. Uh, basically, they say that uh, they're not really sure where it comes from, uh, but they're thinking that it might be an evolutionary adaptation uh, because it turns out that the human brain is wired to believe in God. Or a God of some kind. I did not know that. So, um, we call that the natural knowledge of God. And we say, yeah, it is mm -hmm. wired that way. Uh, God made us. He wants us to know about him. And so he says, hey, <laughs> you know, we'll just wire you so that just naturally you believe in me, which would explain why every culture in the world has some kind of uh, belief in God. Uh, who was it? Uh, it was um, St. Augustine who said, Thou hast made us for thyself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in thee. And so, you know, he would have the reason is, you know, the very simply that God has created us to have a relationship with him, and we must have that. So they also noted that um, people are more, uh, they, they tend to believe more uh, in times of stress. You know, this old expression, there's no atheist in a foxhole. Um, but we call that the theology of the cross. Um, that it's it really, you know, that's what God uses trials and struggles to draw us closer to him. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, and it also says that children are the most susceptible to such a belief. Yeah, and Jesus said, uh, you know, unless you receive the kingdom of heaven like a child, you will not enter it. So, and he upheld children as an example of faith. So, yep, <laughs> Jesus was a pretty good biologist there. <laughs> yeah, he kind of figured it all out. Um, I mean, you know, on the other hand, it's kind of interesting because they're talking about, you know, some sort of evolutionary adaptation. But then they're like, but we can't figure out what, why it would be better. Yeah, one of the idea of evolution, of course, is that it uh, adaptation is that it, you know, there's this, always this idea of um, of survival of the fittest. That somehow or other, this adaptation has to to add and help and and things like that. And they're like, we we don't see how this, you know, hardwired belief in God is is, is contributing to people really. You know, that that gene would get passed on. Then, I mean, it's I guess you know, again the. You know, the argument of evolution is one time there were those people who didn't believe in God and those people who did, and that, that desire to believe in God got passed down because those people somehow or another came out ahead of head on things. Um, you know, but it doesn't say we're you know, we, in the first place. Right. Yeah, you know, whereas, you know, Scripture, you know, very clearly Paul says that God has created us in his image. Well, uh, Genesis, that we created in God's image. And Paul says that, you know, we are created, as you said, with a natural knowledge of God. We know there's something out there. Uh, matter of fact, they even talk about uh, in here the cosmological proof of God, that, you know, something, ha you know, the, you see the wind blow um, and, uh, the thing, and you think something must be there. There has to be a cause and effect. Uh, by the way, my, I really kind of got the kick out of the, the comment about the atheists. That is an atheist, you know, or try to uh, attribute a meaning or a purpose to a tragedy. They said, you know, they they say they don't believe in God, but the fact is they've just kind of muddled it a little bit. Well, you know, the reality is we believe in good and evil. I mean, everybody believes in good and evil. Um, uh, the um, uh, Christian philosopher and apologist Ravi Zacharias, I heard him talking on this, and he says, all right. He had this guy that was real into Nietzsche and stuff that was questioning him. And he, and he says, all right, so, you know, if I would take a, a, a newborn baby, this, you know, pure, um, beautiful baby, and, and I would hold it up here on the stage and then, you know, cut it in half, or, you know, or something, or, or cut its head off or something like that. And, you know, he says, you know, how would you, you know, would you consider that evil? And this uh, this Nietzsche follower says, well, it would upset me, but I couldn't call it evil because there's no such thing as evil. And he says, your emotions betray you. Because why would it upset you? Because inherently you know that that's wrong. You know? So, you know, even from, from our emotions, we know that there's good and evil. Well, if, there's good and, if there is such a thing as good and evil, then where did it come from? All right, you, good and evil can't evolve because, quite frankly, um, the concept of Darwinian evolution is pretty much based on evil. You look out for yourself, and uh, and and you don't look out for anybody else unless they're going to help you get ahead somehow. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's interesting. Yeah, the whole idea of you know what what. Uh, 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 yeah, and that's what we call the uh, argument from conscience, the fact right. that there is an idea of good and evil. There's, and so why? Why is Who's the ultimate judge? I actually met a guy who became Christian by that. Really? He, yeah, he was an atheist. Uh, I interviewed him for seminary, uh, and uh, he was an atheist. And, but he got involved in social justice, and then he you know, began to say, well, why is there justice? And then he said, you know, some people do unjust things, they get away with it, they die. Don't they have to answer for that somewhere? Isn't that wrong that they could be able to cheat and lie and steal and then just go and go to the same dust everybody else does? He said, and he came to the conclusion that he believed that there had to be something, some sort of justice. He had to believe there's someone out there who, who was really just, who would make sure that justice was carried out. And so... Based on that, he said, I, I came to the conclusion God had to exist. 
because that's the only way there could be a just world. And so then he went to went to the Lutheran campus ministry to find out, okay, I can't even say that God exists. Now, who is he? Yeah. Well, and, that's the, and then, you know, boy, when you start looking at God's justice and, uh, and you look at Christ and, boy, there's justice. It's, it's not what we normally think of as, you know, it's not fair, but it's justice. Yeah. Right. So, anyway, so that was a, uh, 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 I don't know, I, I disagree with the, the, the whole, I don't know, basis of this, that, you know, how your brain creates God. No, God created us, and God, God put that brain. imprint. And I got to put that imprint there. But, oh, well, I guess, you know, other ways of helping people believe in God, and one of them is to put out bus signs. <laughs> We've been talking about this. Where did it, did the atheists start it, or did the Christians? Start the atheists it? started it. The okay. atheists started it. They had their their Britain. It was Christmas, and they had uh, out in Britain, and they had these ads on city buses that said, you know, um, just be good for goodness' sake. You know, there is no another said. The other one said, you know, go out and enjoy enjoy life because God probably doesn't exist anyway. Yeah, there's probably no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry. There's no God. <laughs> Be happy. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that was the theme song of the Dukakis campaign. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> you think they were still singing it after the election? I don't think they were, but, uh, <laughs> but these guys still be singing it when Jesus showed back up. I don't think so. Well, anyway. So. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, uh, because of these these atheist bus signs, a lot of people got upset about them, and uh, so now the that campaign has ended. The Christian Party uh, in England is putting up its response, and theirs is there definitely is a God. And then the Russian Orthodox Church has a bus ad that reads, "There is a God. Believe. Don't worry and enjoy your life." <laughs> Which you know we talked about that. That yeah. Because we know there is a God who's looking out for us that loves us, we don't have to worry. And um, and then there's uh, in the next few days says the Trinitarian Bible Society will be posting a line from Psalm fifty three one: "The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God." <laughs> um, I mean, I, I kind of like the the atheist at the end of this. He's like, you know, well, obviously they had an impact. You know, you know, so, um, um, you know, and then, which is a, an interesting thing, you know, got people, you know, talking and stuff. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, the best you're, you're arguing is there's something out there. There is no gospel here, really. No, no, there's not at just all. that there's a God that exists. Well, and not Whoever that, that God happens to be. I mean, what kind of an argument is this? It's like, um, there's no God. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. No, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, how about something, you know, with a little bit of reason or a little bit of, of hope or, you know, I mean, the closest to anything they got was this, uh, don't worry and enjoy your life, you know, where they mimic the, um, atheists and, you know, I don't know. I guess like, I understand they're responding, but you know, I, I've always been of the opinion that if you're going to respond, you know, in a in a debate format, do one better, not just you know, say yes, there is. <laughs> That's right. Well, like this one guy says, says, the forces of darkness are in retreat. How are they in retreat? You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't get this. Well, they got run, um, over, run over by a bus. <laughs> so, I don't know. Um, now the the uh, the Christian Party, it's a, it's a minor political party. Um, it says the ads also seek to raise money by encouraging people for a two dollar fee to text "Amen." Like, oh yeah, that's great. Turn it into a fundraiser for a political <laughs> party. Oh, yeah, that's oh. <laughs> that irritated me. Oh, my favorite one is uh, this guy, Fred Edwards, uh, spokesman for American Human Association, said that they were going to do a bus campaign in New Orleans during Mardi Gras that says, you don't believe in God, you're not alone. 
I thought, is, is, can God be found at Mardi Gras? <laughs> I mean, is well, God anywhere there near Mardi Gras? I mean, you know, I mean, you know, ask. yeah, the videos I've seen are hmm, pretty wild down there, at Mardi Gras. <laughs> Not much God there. <laughs> Most people that are down there, if they do believe, uh, they're trying to forget him for one night. Fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. So, um, you know, but I, I, again, I guess, you know, yeah, it does, you know, the, the, if I was the, the atheist, I'd feel pretty good because, you know, it got some impact and you got these people, you know, you know, you know, uh, um, mimicking you and following your example. And I guess the bus companies are happy because they're making money. Right. I just, as an evangelism strategy, I just don't know if this is, you know, um, you know, what if it said, yeah, there is a God and you know him through Christ. Um, because for us, you know, for the Christian, that that's what it's all about. It's not just proclaiming that God exists, right. but that God can be known through Christ and through Christ alone. Right. And without Christ, you know, there's no knowing God. You know, we, we just talked about, oh, we already know there's a God. All right. So the question is, who is that God? So, yeah, right. if you're going to do some kind of, if you're going to spend a bunch of money, you know, two hundred thousand dollars. Oh, that's what the that's what the atheists spent. I don't know how much the other guys spent, but you know, if you can spend a bunch of money to put placards on a bus, how about you say something like, "There is a God. His name is Jesus. You know, and He loves you, and He or He paid for your sin, or He gave you eternal life, or you know, something like that." So, yeah, kind of. Although, or you can give us two bucks by texting his name into our <laughs> your phone. <laughs> there is a God, and he wants your money. <laughs> no, there is a God, and we want your money. Yeah. There is a God, and we're cashing in on him right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, excuse me for yawning, folks. It's been a long day. I started today at about 5 a.m., so uh, it's sounds about like, 10 o'clock now, so it's a long day. Sounds like you need a stimulus bill to stimulate you. No. <laughs> oh, very nice, Glenn. I'm sure there's money in there for me somewhere. I mean, you know, I, please please don't get me started on the so-called stimulus bill. You realize the stimulus bill is as big as the American... The entire um, uh, entire United States um, um, budget, you know, back in the early '80s. Um, but um, anyway, yeah, let's talk about the stimulus bill. <laughs> um, now, the fun part, of course, about the stimulus bill is that it came out of conference. And nobody really knows what it said. The the, the senator, the the, the, the Congress people got to 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 look at it about for an hour before uh, they actually um, voted on it, and it was over. It was about seventeen hundred pages long. So speed readers. It's kind of fun to find out what little things are in there, you know. But one of them <clears throat> was to repair. Modernize, renovate, or repair facilities. That's good. However, it prohibited money being used to modernize, renovate, or repair facilities that allows sectarian instruction, religious worship, or a school or department of divinity. Yeah. So if your school has a, um, a Bible club or something like that, the... Um that meets after school there, well, I'm sorry, you are no longer eligible for this money, even right. though you have well, a constitutional this, right to have that club. Um, I mean, or if it says, you know, that, that allow, a, you know, a school or a department of divinity, then that would mean, you know, such, you know, Star Wars of right ring, you know, thought of as Harvard, Yale, uh, 
Colombia. You know, uh, uh, I mean, these all the uh, a ton of Boston University, you know, won't be able to touch the money because they have departments of theology and divinity schools. Um, Don't most schools, I mean, as far as like state schools and that, have theology departments, even if they're not divinity schools? I mean, that I don't know. I mean, because I took, well, I took, there was a, in, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is definitely a secular school, um, they have a Department of Biblical Studies. So, yeah, that would be a good question. Does, 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 does that, what does that, uh, yeah, but then, you know, critics said, yeah, yeah, if a public school has a religious group meet on campus, psh, you won't be able to get it. Um, you know, the, it, it, it's, it, Somewhere along the line, there's going to be a court case to determine what this language means. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's going to come up and people are going to find out and say, hey, uh, um, what does this really mean? Of course, the, you know, American United for the Separated Church of State think it's, wonder think it's, think it's wonderful. Surprise. You know. Um, yep. And, you know. And I agree that generally, you know, this one guy says, uh, you know, for, for 37 years, the law of the land is that the government can't pay for buildings that are used for religious purposes. And I wouldn't think that they would allow a church by any means. But, you know, when I was uh, at uh, the St. Louis Seminary, the uh, federal government did give the seminary a grant to um, make the um, seminary more energy efficient. Okay. And to, um, you know, um, deal with, uh, you know, uh, controlling all the the heat and, and, and air conditioning everywhere and stuff. Uh, and to help that all be computer controlled and everything. I can't remember all the details about it, but, I'm do, you know, they were doing the work while I was there. And uh, they said it was paid for a, a, a federal government grant. Uh, but then, you know, okay, the federal government wants to encourage energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. That's something that's going to benefit everyone as we, you know, use energy more efficiently. Yep. Let's uh, drain on the grid. So, uh, you know, there's kind of in a way, yes, you're you're giving the money to a religious school, but there is a secular purpose behind it. You aren't giving the money to, you know, make pastors. Right. Yeah, it's not like it's going into a scholarship fund or something like that. So, I'm, you know, the goofy thing is the stimulus bill has been rewritten so many times since this article came out on February 4th that I don't even know if it's in there anymore. Right. And it's kind of long to skim through it. Oh, we know there's, it's all in the up and up and there's no con congressman's, you know, Best friend's cousin, the cousin's best friend, who's you know going to be benefiting from this. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we can be pretty sure about. I that. mean, you know, just because the president's from Chicago, where you know they're, they're, they're you know they you know graft is common, you know, it's, it never would happen. Hey, you know, it's all right. He, he's checking up on them, though, because he took his wife to Chicago for uh, Valentine's Day. Your tax dollars paid for that Air Force One trip, too. Although he yeah. says well, Air hey. Force One's pretty spiffy, so. <laughs> hey, no, no, I would, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, I would always defend the president's need to take Air Force One no matter where, because that's, that's just reality. He, you know, he can't be flying commercial. There's too much stuff he's got to have uh, all the time. No, I, I agree with so, that. I'm just wondering whether he couldn't find a restaurant in Washington, D.C. <laughs> I, that I don't know. But, um, you know, I just, uh, um, I, I, you know, the devil's always in the details. And this is, I think, it's a, you know, a nice little detail that's there that you're just like, hmm. Yeah. yeah, how is this going to get interpreted if it even stayed in there? Um, but uh, you know, I'm not. Um, 
my view, if you're going to give almost a trillion dollars away, uh, best thing to do is just to be cancel all taxes for a year and you know let people keep their money and uh, do whatever with it. Um, I'm not too sure of the whole idea of a, 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 a of this anyway, but um, hey, you know what? We probably have some people who disagree. There's probably people out there who think the stimulus is a good idea. Let us know. Podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yep. Uh, be interested in your comments. Be willing to share with, you know, put them on, on the air just like ours. Um, and you can say, hey, you guys are, are wrong. The stimulus is a great idea. Yep. Now we'll, we'll, we'll share that comment. Um, but, uh, I mean, to a certain extent, they're right. I mean, there was a, um, a court case in Washington State, uh, where this guy lost a college scholarship because he was going to, you know, go to a study for the pastoral ministry. And they're like, that really wasn't the goal, I, our idea. And he's like, well, you know, you just said go to school, you know, you didn't say for what. Um, okay. And I can understand them saying, yeah, we, that's not something we want to support. And I can see this, the federal government saying, look, our goal here is, you know, just to keep, um, uh, a seminary from applying for the money. Because again, I mean, uh, whereas some, you know, there are some legitimate seminaries and there are some fly by night places out there. Yep. Um, so I can understand them sitting back and saying, yeah, okay, we're not too hip on some of this, um, um, you know, on, on where it gets spent. It just, you know, if you're going to, I, you just got to be careful that you don't write it overly broad so that, you know, now they're running around kicking, you know, churches out of schools. You know, if a church runs, you know, a lot of churches I know start, you know, uh, a church plant will start worshiping, you know, like in a school gymnasium on the weekend. Yep. Well, now we're going to kick you out because, you know, we can't have you in here in order to get, you know, modernize the gym or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, like I said, I think if that if that provision is still there, it's probably going to wind up being a court case. Yeah, it's just I think it's just worded overly vague. You know, if they wanted specifics to say, you know, we don't want the federal government paying, you know, to support pastors or you know or something like that, whatever, fine. But it's just it's so vague right now that it's just it's just too broad. So um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Well, let's end up tonight uh, and uh, head over to Rome. And uh, recently, the uh, uh, Pope Benedict uh, had de-excommunicated uh, some independent bishops out there. One of whom happened; his name was last name Williamson, who happens to um, deny the Holocaust. Now, you know, please um, let me make it very clear that I don't deny the Holocaust. Uh, In fact, my my father helped liberate Dachau. And uh, when we were there when I was in high school, yeah, Dad walked me around and told me what they saw coming into Dachau. Hmm. So if you're uh, going to deny it, then um, you you need to tell my father that he didn't see what he told me he saw. So, um, and obviously, then having you know bringing, I think if there were three of them, nobody probably would have said too much. But bringing de excommunicating the guy who denied the Holocaust, okay, that got him into some super hot water here. Yeah. Now, first of all, this this group of it's four bishops um, that are that he sort of brought back in or pardoned or whatever. Um, and what these guys are, they're from the Society of St. Pius X. And um, they reject the ecumenical teachings of the Second Vatican Council. Um, their leader was uh, Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, I believe is how it's pronounced. And um, they were excommunicated in 1969 by Pope John Paul II. Um, they want the Vatican to declare that there's no salvation outside the Roman Catholic Church. They want to return to old liturgies in which Mass is said in Latin. And they say that Vatican II, which met in the early 60s, violates true Catholicism and is the reason why many have left the, the faith. 
So it sounds like Benedict is saying, eh, you know what, think what you want. We'll still, you know, we'll still let you in. You know, we can't really, uh, you know, you're, you're departing, uh, from the, from the church council. And, uh, as one put it, how can they claim to be traditional while rejecting Vatican II, which is one of the only church councils in history? You know? So, um, although, I mean, one of the only, there's been like, even if you count the, the Vatican councils, there's been what, like 20 or something or more. I mean, you know, there's been quite a few, but not that many when you consider you're talking over a period of 2000 years. So, um, oh, just to give you a correction, by the way, because you said they were executed in 1969. They were founded in 1969. Uh, in uh, 1988, they consecrated these four bishops. Oh, right. Uh, this Archbishop Marcel uh, Lavry, Le- however you say his last name. And then that's when okay. Pope John Paul excommunicated them right. uh, because they had uh, – uh, not because it's because of necessarily their teaching, but because they were – ordained against his express order. So, uh, 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 yeah, I kind of like the, the one guy talking about them. They said, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, we adhere to everything the Catholic Church has taught for 2,000 years. We agree with everything the first 140 popes said, but not the last couple. I was trying to figure that one out because given how many times that those first 140 popes have contradicted each other. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how they agree with all of them. <laughs> so, but hey, that's details. All right, but the the problem is really that that that, that he's got is this one. And again, it was, it was three of them. People probably wouldn't have cared. Okay, there's some right. ultra conservative guys here. Fine, go ahead and bring them in. Um, but they've got this one guy who denies the Holocaust, and that's going to be a real. Uh, I mean, I, I, obviously, I think we've got one of the. I think we've got a real problem there because uh, that's just going to bring in some, you know, real bad blood. So to speak. I mean, the, the, the reality. Well, the reality is, is how can you? You know, bring him in without appearing to say, I agree with him. Right. Yeah. How can you remove his excommunication without, you know, saying, look, um, you know, we, I, he, he, they were, I, I, guess, I guess they were excommunicated for going against the papal orders in terms of their ordination. We're overseeing, you know, we're not excusing anything else. In fact, some of them said, look, while they're no longer excommunicated, they're still suspended. You know, but, you know, we're trying to bring some reconciliation with these guys. It doesn't mean we agree with him. Yeah, that's a very, very tough line to draw, a tough line to, to, to draw on a very, very tight, hard, tight rope to walk on. Right. Right. So, uh, you know, and in Germany, it is illegal to uh, to deny the Holocaust. They'll land you in jail. So, you know, and, and they're also saying, look, you know, the papacy has been trying to, uh, to foster relations um, with the Jews. And, you know, obviously there's some pretty major disagreements, but they're trying to establish, you know, uh, decent relationships with them. Uh, you know, the Holocaust is kind of a sticky point when it comes to the Jews. And rightly so. Uh, so to just, you know, to to bring a guy like this back in without, uh, you know, there, there's been no, the, the guy hasn't said, you know what, um, I, I, you know, I was wrong or anything like that. He hasn't, um, he hasn't changed his mind about it or, or anything like that. And, uh, yeah. And several Catholics themselves aren't very happy. Not only, not only people outside. Uh, one of the guys is uh, a fairly liberal cleric uh, by the name of uh, Herman Hingering. Uh, and uh, he says, um, if the Pope wants to do some good for the church, he should leave his job. Would it be a scandal? A bishop has to relinquish his position in 75 and a cardinal loses its rights at 80. 
you know, Benedict's 81. So, you know, shh. Um, and uh, another one of them says, um, this is uh, uh, Franco Gorelli, an expert in religious history in Italy, says this is a pardon that tastes of poison. That's my son walking behind me, by the way. Um, uh, and another guy says, um, what, in, in Austria, I think it is, um, says there can be no rehabilitation. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. Um, Vienna, uh, the Cardinal and Archbishop Christoph Shaneborn says, uh, he who denies the Holocaust cannot be rehabilitated within the church. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's some pretty strong language. He's, he's getting some pretty, you know, being separated quite a bit from, I think, uh, a, a, a lot of European Roman Catholicism there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I, you know, he being from, uh, Benedict's from Poland, right? So I would think that. He's German. Brad oh, he's German. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Um, John Paul was Polish. Um, and I, I'm thinking he ought to know better. I mean, being from Germany, you know, he, <laughs> he could, he couldn't bring this guy into the country or not in Germany. Of course, he's not in Germany now. He's in Vatican City, but, um, you know, <laughs> He he just he ought to know better that you know that that this is gonna be a um a, a blunder you know because I mean you know and here's the thing as the Pope not only is he um you know the head of a uh, a big religion he's also a head of state all right and so you know there's all these uh, you know when he when he does something it also affects the um, you know, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, relations with other countries. And this is really going to put a strain on, you know, Vatican German relations. And, you know, I understand, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, again, you know, could he have brought in three, you know, the, but not the fourth and said, look, sorry, uh, you know, you can, you know, be pre-Vatican II all you want, but if you're going to deny the Holocaust, forget it. Now, yeah, that's. You know. Are there other bishops that, though, that deny the Holocaust that were not part of this uh, this Pius X group that haven't been booted out though? And did I don't bring, know. You know, because then it could be that, like, well, okay, if I tell this guy, no, you can't, then. I'm going to have to hunt down all the, uh, any other, uh, Holocaust deniers out there and get rid of them. Which probably wouldn't be That's a bad a good idea. Question. It'd probably be a pretty good <laughs> no, PR move. So, so I don't, you know, at the same time, I wouldn't want to be in his boots. Um, nice mm -hmm. though they are. Ah. <laughs> You know, it's no, uh, he's got a tough job. I have enough trouble dealing with my own little flock, let alone you know a billion, a flock of you know a billion, and plus having to you know have everything that you say and do be scrutinized by the world. Um, you know, not to mention too, not, not cases on a, on a podcast out and you know, <laughs> aren't even Catholic, you know. I, um, but um, but whereas you know, I I I, I appreciate much about his his. Um, conservative uh, stance in a lot of areas. I think the idea of, of bringing the ultra-conservatives back in, I mean, it's, it's at least, you know, trying to bring, you know, some stability and unity. Uh, think they could know without the Holocaust denier. Because I just don't see how you can bring him in without basically saying his, what he teaches is okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's certain yeah. things. And, you know, this is another, this brings us back to our first story. You know, that there's certain things that you can agree to disagree on. This isn't one of them. And, right. you know, and, and even atheists will say that. And so why? Because it's so evil. Um, you know, not, not necessarily denying it being um, inherently evil because, you know, someone could just be duped. You know, there's people out there that think we didn't land on the moon too. Um, 
but you know, to everyone thinks that the Holocaust was evil, except for a bunch of you know neo Nazis and stuff. But um, they just don't think. Period. So um, this is this is just more evidence that um, that God is out there and that He's just. Um, and that there is such a thing as good and evil. So, uh, you know, thank God that he has sent Jesus to save us uh, from that evil. Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, I just don't know how he can think. don't know how he can do that. Just don't know how he can. So. Well, maybe you all disagree with us. Maybe you think he can. Maybe you think it was a good idea. Uh, share with us your thoughts, your ideas, your uh, other beliefs and things. would be much more. Really would like to know them. Um, at podcast at crossfeednews.com. Yep. Um, so. Like your comments on the uh, the different format. Not that it's intentional or anything. Not that we necessarily plan to start with it. But, you know, if we get a whole bunch of people and say, hey, I really like that, you know. Uh, we'll think about it. Um, and uh, and this podcast filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> uh, that it definitely is. Uh, any other comments, questions? Did we get any comments this week that we need to share no. with the people? No, nope, nothing. So, so let's hear from you. We didn't hear from you this week, so let's hear from you. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. So, and, and it, again, if anybody has a problem, especially with the audio, um, I'm wondering about, uh, we apologize for that. So, but we appreciate your patience and, uh, and, uh, and, and we're yeah, not going to ask us. you to, you know, to text us so we can make a couple bucks off you either. So, <laughs> take care, everybody. God bless you. And we will be seeing you again. Yep. Good night, everybody. God bless you.